Good evening, sir. Thanks very much for your time. I think people have seen some videos of this phenomenon, um, uh, you know, a few times. But how exactly, I mean, do they, do these people ensure that at the end of the day they do actually get what they want? From the videos that I've seen, I've seen them like walking into a council meeting or a tender, like briefing, making a lot of noise. But that's as far as, you know, uh, I, I have seen it. How do they ensure that at the end of the day they do actually get what they want? Well, they use uh, intimidation. They are armed uh, with rifles, some of them with AK-47 uh, assault rifles, uh, uh, like in the Mutentu Bridge, which is in the Eastern Cape part of the N2 uh, uh, Sunral uh, development. Uh, that's what they do. And in fact, we have a case in KZN where a black contractor was accosted by some of these armed gangs to demand a stake in the project and he refused and they killed him. And I was speaking recently to the relative, close relative, and no one has been arrested despite the perpetrators being allegedly known uh, to the police. Why do you think um, that is? Is it simply because police are incompetent? They simply look the other way, they don't care? Or is there more to it to this than meets the eye? Well, there are various uh, explanations given by site managers. Uh, for example, in certain instances where they even get caught interdicts against uh, the disruptors, uh, when they do disrupt, they call the police, they come and they shake hands and talk to these people and leave. And we have engaged a KZN uh, uh, a safety and security department for quite some time. Unfortunately, that has not uh, uh, yielded any uh, results. Do you think it has anything to do what we're talking about with the Deputy Chief Justice now, state capture? Because part of the theory is that um, to allow or enable what has been happening in this country over the past um, you know, few years, um, someone or some people had to make an effort of making sure that the state law enforcement agencies that are supposed to do something about the wrongdoings that are going on, you had to cripple them, make sure that they actually don't do what they are supposed to do. And that was done apparently in all sorts of different ways. One, it was to capture, you know, the police to make sure that those who report cases to them, those cases don't go very far, if anywhere. And the other one was to make sure that those among the police who actually do their work pay the price. And that sends a warning to others that these, these people you don't touch or just leave. Turn a blind eye to this. What do you think is happening? Well, I cannot... Uh rule out uh, that kind of scenario given the lethargy that has been displayed by the law enforcement uh, agencies. In fact, I can take it further. My own suspicion is that this might also be a sabotage to the new dawn because you cannot have a situation where a president of the country on the 21st of September last year uh, was unveiling the stimulus package said that the stimulus and recovery uh, uh, plan prioritizes infrastructure spending as a critical driver uh, of the economy. Uh, now, if projects, now I reported last time, they were about 25.5 billion. At present, they are 27 billion 481 uh, uh, value of projects that are being disrupted. Uh, the economy is at a standstill. There's no economic activity. It means that the taxes will not be collected from payers UN, from corporate tax, and from the buying power of those who have disposable income to buy there. So we'll not reach even the ambitions of uh, tax collections because 20, nearly 30 billion rand, we are estimating that could be double. We're still counting other companies are still reporting. And I think that situation is an emergency situation where 
government at the highest level. That is why I appealed to the Minister of Finance and also escalated the matter to the President uh, to intervene uh, because jobs are going to be lost and investor sentiment is adversely affected. The two projects, the Mutain 2 Bridge, there's a, a German company in uh, partnership with uh, uh, Avenge that is pulling out. I think they are battling it out in court. And in the Eastern Cape last uh, week, uh, 13th of March, a 2.4 billion rand private investment project of a German an investor being built by Double BHO was disrupted. Female engineers, engineers crying, going into the felt, saying, I will never come back into this country. We need to leave. Already we have 110 known, not known, engineers that have left the country. And once the construction industry loses that capacity like the rest of Africa, foreigners are going to build the infrastructure. Those engineers are going to come back here with foreign companies that double the cost because we'll not have that capacity to build the infrastructure in the country. So you mentioned the uh, uh, like KZN uh, safety and security. If I was to walk out of the studio and try to hold the people you've tried to um, you know, sensitize around this issue, who do I go to? KZN police. Head of police in KZN, the president. Uh, 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 the head of police in the Department of Safety and Security, uh, the CIDB, the Construction Industry Development Board, uh, the ministers of uh, public works. They are aware. We've raised the issue. That is why now I've directed the matter to the Minister of Finance and also to the president himself to, to, to intervene. And I think there's another perspective people need to, to, to understand. This is an industry in decline, and the JSE listed companies, for example, have lost over 70% of their value in the past 10 years. Some are in business rescue, jobs are being lost, and also compounding the problem is the uh, disinvestment in the infrastructure spend, the biggest uh, 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 reduction in infrastructure spending since the 90s happened in the 2018-19 uh, 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 budget, for an example, where 113.1 billion was reduced, uh, representing a nominal decrease of 12 percent. Also now in the recent budget that was announced it's only an increase of 9.7 billion rands. But we need to refocus and understand what it means for infrastructure to be a key driver of economic activity and stamp the tide before it's too late. I see this as a challenge to the authority of the state. In fact, I call it economic sabotage. But I do want to mention that I've spoken to the president of the Fred uh, uh, Forum for Radical Economic Transformation, uh, Mr. Malusi uh, Zondi. A reasonable chap, the leadership, it started there as, a, as leaders. They are not involved, their members are not involved in what is happening. It's people who splinter groups that have hijacked the whole process, and he is willing to be interviewed. They, they distance themselves from the gruesome pictures that we, we have seen there. Lawlessness has settled in. The rule of law is not working. Law enforcement ad agencies are incapacitated. And we have to ask the question, why? That we'll try and ask. And thanks very much for coming through this evening. South African Forum of Civil Engineering Contractors Chief Executive Webster Mfebe.